Hi, my YouTube family. How are y'all doing today? Hope everyone is doing, having a lovely time today, a wonderful, enjoying your day. I am having a wonderful day. I am blessed right now. It's feeling very good. I'm, my daughter was just telling me that it's cold in the house, but I needed to record so I don't start sweating. Oh, so I haven't actually sat down and did a talk with me video for a while. You know, I've been doing a whole bunch of cook videos, taking you along with me on my journey while I'm working, getting stuck in Buckman traffic. So today, let me tell y'all, if y'all live in the Jacksonville area, by the time y'all see the video, y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's going to work. And then at the last minute, I saw the sign say, um, major accident happened on 17 all lanes shut down. So I'm like, what do you mean all lanes shut down off 17? Or they talking about shutting down off, they didn't, they wasn't specific about what was shutting down. Was 17 shut down or was 295 shut down? So I go, okay. I said, I can write this out because I don't been in traffic before. You know, I was giving myself time to go to work. So all of a sudden I seen a police officer on my left facing us as we're driving he was facing with the lights on so i didn't that i think he was just telling everybody to slow down so we slowed down the next thing i know everything was stopped and i'm like okay no no worries next thing and i look behind me, i see the police no more and i see him around the curb then i realized I say wait hold on they mean all lanes of 295 are shut down not 17 Everything of 295 shut down. So I say, oh my gosh, here we go. I mean, when I say shut down, we literally, if you guys know 295, you know, um, Blanding area and Blanding separates from 295. There's a concrete wall there, so you can't really get over it. You need to get over it. That side, when you pass by Blanding, all of us, had to turn around on that road to go back. When I say they shut it down, so they had to shut down I-10. Everybody that's coming into 295, everybody that's coming off black, anybody that was coming into 295 was closed down. So if you guys wonder why everything was chaotic, all over Jacksonville, all the traffic was backed up because they had to stop everybody from coming on 295 we're blending, anybody coming towards 17, mm -mm. anybody, even if you were coming the opposite way you need to get off blending, you were stuck too, because all of us was coming to you in your direction. So I just wanted to give you guys, oh, that was crazy. So I just wanted to mention that, but that's not why I wanted to talk. I wanted to talk about my first experience when we first moved here to Jacksonville put me, my girls, my husband, um, we was staying in our house. And let me tell you, okay, I have asthma. So my asthma is, was, I thought Jacksonville was going to kill me. Okay. Because I went to the hospital for my asthma the very first time. And I was there, I think for like three weeks, my girls lived there. <laughs> they actually brought everything to the hospital food, clothes, everything, driving back and forth. They gave my daughter my car if they need to get something to eat. Because for some reason, the, the humidity here in Jacksonville was not coincide with me, with my asthma. So I was back and forth into the hospital. I think the longest I stayed was, I think a month. And within that month, being that I was just confined to bed, I started getting blood clots. So then I stayed longer. So it's okay, but my girl stayed with me the whole time I was there. My other daughter, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all something about that. Okay, so I was in the hospital, I couldn't get out. So my daughter just fed, I think she was in 11th grade or the 12th grade. And she had this girl that she wanted to go and um, spend the weekend with, right? Now me, I know every mother, when your child wants to spend the night or weekend over someone's house, you want to either meet the parents or you want to go there 
to see where your child is going to be sleeping at. So I was confined in the hospital. I couldn't go, couldn't go. So the family came to me in the hospital so I could meet with them. Okay, so let me just put it to you like this. Sometimes when you meet certain people, you already know the condition of whatever the, the case may be. You just know something is not right. But I didn't tell my sis, my daughter, sorry, my daughter, we all act like sisters sometimes. I didn't tell her, I just said, okay, so let me get, I met with the mother and the daughter and she went. <laughs> I called her. No, I, I, don't, I can't remember if she called me first or I called her first. But let me y'all just say this like this. She regretted her decision. 100 plus. Because sometimes your friends act one way, but then when you see them outside of the circle, outside of school, it's totally different. So even though I had some inkling about the family, but I needed, she needed to see it for herself. So she was like, mama, come get me. I, well, she wanted her stepdad to come get me. I don't even know if he was here yet. Because when we moved here, my husband still had his, um, his, his job because how we moved here, I'm getting off topic, but how we moved here was, you know, we, we was planning on moving to North Carolina, but at the last minute, my husband saw this deal for this four bedroom um, brick home for, I think it was five fifty a month, four bedroom, two bathroom home, brick home. So when we sold our house, homes in Miami, we took the money that we had and purchased two homes, straight cash out, and my husband was gonna fix them up. There was gonna be our rental properties and we were gonna live where we were living at. But a whole um, situation happened that we ended up having to, my husband had to hurry up and fix the house that we were in before we moved in this house. So, um, it's so much that I want to talk about that, but I don't know what the boundary is for. I don't want to put nobody out on blast like that. So let's just put it to this way. We, my husband had to end up going and fixing the house that we stayed in. We moved here in 2010, in April, 2010. So we had to put the walls in, put the floors in, do the bathrooms, you know, paint, um, paint walls, get it ready for us to move in that house. So he still had a job in Miami. So he was, com he was back and forth working through the week and coming to us on the weekend, or if he can't make it, he would just, um, tell me, but I had access to all the money and all the banks and stuff like that. So Money wasn't the issue with the point of the fact that we would just move there and he wasn't there in beginning time for us because he had to work to provide for us. But anyway, my daughter, no, he, I don't remember was he, my husband, there at that time or not. I really wish I could remember, but all I know is that she, she can't, I don't even remember. I think I got out of the hospital then. I think I came and picked her up. I'm not sure if I came and picked her up or not. Um, I will have to ask her that and maybe she'll tell me, then I'll tell you guys in another um, video. But anyway, she regretted her decision <laughs> to, to go visit. From then on, she never asked me, can she go spend the night over any once? Because that was, actually, that was the first time I ever let my girls spend the night over anybody's house. All my cousins and my nieces and my nephews, they all stay with me. I think I let them stay with their auntie maybe once or twice, I can't remember, but I believe they might have stayed with their auntie maybe once or twice. But I, I usually always have the girls to my house. You know, we travel everywhere together. But anyway, back on the topic, zone back in. 
Yeah, y'all know how that goes. <laughs> you, your body just zones out and it's locked into somewhere and you, you don't even know what you're thinking about. So anyway, when I was in the hospital um, for that time, getting blood clots and everything for a month, my kids lived there too. So yeah, they had everything up. I had my own private room. Everything was in my room. The lab, they laptops, they go to school, come back from school, they walk there and all this back and forth. So I think the hospital was Shans where I was when we first moved here. I'm not even quite sure about that. I think it was Shans. But let me tell y'all, they really took care of me because I just moved here. And I think three days after being here, I don't know, I think my kids had to Google the closest hospital that was to us. And um, because thank God, it was only what, what, maybe three minutes away. Went there, they took me straight to the back. They didn't know my name, nothing about me, nothing about me and I remember that when I went in there my um once they got me situated you know the people came in to get my name my information the doctor said you cannot talk to her right now she's not able to talk she needs to be taken care of 100% once they got me cord I asked them where I did like this you know I was trying to tell them my girls my girls came in there and uh, my um my daughter Sierra and Josephine <laughs> saw the lady go I saw the lady go go by with the needle and I just went everything came to a halt I was like and they laughing at me because they already know terrified of needles yeah I'm very tight terrified of needles And then when I was in there um, for that time, being that I started getting blood clots, they had to take my blood every morning at four o'clock in the morning. I think after a week, I was like, no more. I couldn't do it. I think I'm gonna pass out. So I stopped telling them to come in there and take the blood out, you know, IVs the blood out. And so, the doctor came in the next morning and said, oh, we didn't get no um, report about your blood, your levels and stuff. I say, because I told him, no, I had enough. I said, I can't deal with it anymore. I say, I'm, I feel like I'm going to pass out. <clears throat> Excuse me, like you heard the burp. And he said, okay, so we're going to have to tr try to do it again. I said, okay, no problem. So... Um, the nurse came in and she said, we have a surprise for you. I'm like, what kind of surprise you got for me? So they came in with this guy. He said, I'm going to tell you like this. He looked at my arms and he said, if I can't get no um, IV in you just for drawing blood, they won't be able to do it. I said, okay. So he was looking. That's when I knew that found that they had a vein finder. Looking. And I'm uh, I'm all, I got my hand clenched to the side of the bed and I'm like doing like this and you know, I got my arm telling me don't move. Then the next, you know, he said, he's done. I'm like, huh? He said, yes, I'm done. I said, why didn't feel it even go in? He's, I said, I'm going to tell them that your vein is very fragile. It will burst in them if they don't take their time. They can use the same vein to take blood out of you and put medicine into you. That's the vein they can use. I said, really? He said, yes, yeah, sometimes it depends on the vein that they use or they can't use it back and forth. But the vein that he put in this arm, the times I was there, they can take blood out of that and they can put medicine into it. I was so excited about that. But I was there for so long that the needles started moving. I felt, I was like, oh crap. So when they went to put medicine in it, it burnt like crazy. And I knew it. I had to tell her. So, she, But she went and got him again, and I was very confident. You know, so then they just took it out. Then they, they had this one guy that came in every night at 4 o'clock. There was a specializing and taking blood. Come in, I don't feel a thing. Nothing at all. That was, I was excited about that. Yay. I was really happy. So from there, I was um, very happy with them taking blood out. And then this one time this guy came in, he took it from my hand. Every time somebody screamed, I said, hold on, I thought y'all not supposed to hurt nobody. And he just looked at me. Oh. So every time I see him come in, I said, oh my God, you're going to hurt me. 
But he said, no, I'm not. I said, yes, you is. So he came in like the second time, third time he came in that he didn't hurt me. I think they was training him. how. To, I think he was, he used to get it out of the hand because he would never get it out of my arm, but he would get it out of my hand. So, okay, I'm, as long as he didn't hurt me, I don't mind because when then time to take needles into me, blood pressure is off the roof. I don't care. It's almost time for me to go visit my doctor and it's almost lab time. I already know that already, so. My blood pressure gonna be kick off the roof. <sighs> so how you guys doing? What was you guys first experience going to a um, hospital when you moved to another city or state and you had something that, you know, that is bothering you and you had to go to the emergency room and how did you guys cope with it? How did they treat you? I mean, my first experience was good. I, they gave me my own room. I was very pleased with that. I feel better now. I mean, I come in, I want to talk to you guys because I had so much going on that I just wanted to sit down for a little bit and talk. Get to know you guys a little bit more. Let you guys get to know me. Yeah. Oh, yes. You saw me look back away because I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to sit you guys at to talk a little bit more. Maybe I'll sit you guys right here. <laughs> let me let you down a little bit. Okay. <sighs> so I thought I'd just come in and sit down and chit chat so you guys get to know me a little bit more and my experience when I first moved here to Jacksonville which is a lot so I know it was a lot in this vlog there is so much to talk about you know I was skipping points from here skipping points from there because with my daughter, with the girl, you know, there was a lot going on there that I just don't want to get into. And my experience with the hospital was great. I really loved it. I love my kids. I love my husband. But once once I got into the hospital and I had to stay there, was my husband just decided to make up his mind and come, come back because I was, he had to take care of the girls while I was in there. Mm. So I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna eat right now. Um, maybe I'll come back and sit down and chit chat some more with you guys and um, see what's going on. <laughs> and thank everyone for subscribing to my channel who has subscribed and who have not subscribed. Come in, welcome, enjoy. Sorry for the interruption guys. You know, when you're using um, your phone, expect the call, right? My daughter keeps telling me to put it on Do Not Disturb, but I keep forgetting to do that because um, when you work with real estate, you, you want the people to be able to reach you. When you say Do Not Disturb, that can mean a lot of things, phone off or whatever. So, no. Mm -mm. I decided not to do that. So, hopefully, you guys have... Um, told me, not told me, but let me know about your birthdays in July so I can add you to my list to say happy birthday to you in July. I will be announcing everyone who is birthday is in July. I will buy a little small cupcake, put a candle on it, and wish everybody happy birthday. Okay? I would do that for my birthday too because actually my birthday is in June. Y'all yeah, get on this, wish myself happy birthday on YouTube and on Instagram and on TikTok to let everybody know I said happy birthday. I'm going to be happy about the birthdays that's coming out for me too. So I just want to come in and give y'all a little bit more insight about me. So y'all have a wonderful, blessed, and safe day. Don't forget to like, 
comment, and su subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you guys be notified when the next video is up. And don't forget to follow me on all my social media accounts down in my bio. So y'all have a wonderful, safe, and a blessed day. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.